What's your approach to recruitment and building your team? I think as in sales, people buy from people. So when I hire employees, they, they're buying from me as such, like they're investing in me. So the more passionate I am about the journey, the vision, the project, the easier it is to hire people. So I've noticed this when I mentor a lot of my recruitment owners inside one of my coaching programs. They struggle with the hiring piece. That's because I don't think they come, some, sometimes they don't come across very passionate. You've got to be likable and enthusiastic around your vision and why they're going to work for you and things see your future instead of just doing a nice job ad and everything else it's like they need to have conviction to know that why they should work for you over 20 30 other people so i think that that's exactly the same mindset as i had when people used to say to me how do i find mentors like i was very lucky for my journey i had lots of mentors for free that were some were worth 100 million some were worth 60 70 million that I was playing golf with i met them because i was always hungry for personal development and learning things all of the time and i could add value to, to them in their business so that's probably the same when you're hiring employees like you've got to add value to them and know that you're doing something a little bit of a different way compared to the competition that intrigues them and keeps them on board. Tip when I look for hiring is I always say in my interview, look, I'm not going to be a man manager. I'm not going to be here to motivate you every day and wind you up like to go away and work. So you need to come to work batteries included. Like I'm not here to charge you up and get you motivated for the day. You need to self-motivate yourself and want to do the work. So I always set expectations from the start when we do hire is like they need to come to work ready because sometimes as an entrepreneur, you're not gonna be able to be the micromanager all of the time and keep those people motivated. And I always try and get my employees to read, watch YouTube videos, do motivational things, because you always wanna create that spark with them. But some people just want a nine to five job as well and a repeatable task. So it does depend on what type of employee you're hiring, but definitely for A players, you need to do all of the, the things I mentioned and more to get them on board. Do you share like YouTube videos and books and stuff with your teams, try and get them to read them, try and pump them up a bit then? Yeah, all the time. In, uh, we used to do that in the office and we used to do like a lunch and learn and then I'll play like a, a motivational YouTube video or a mentor that I learned from 10, 15, 20 minutes and then always in Slack channels like I'll always try and get them to watch what you'll tend to notice they probably won't be as hungry as we are to learn all the time I'm sure you're the same like on an evening I'll spend 2-3 hours a night watching some YouTube and it's interesting because you'll tend to see like what oh, well, what differentiates the success between yourself or me or someone else is like doing that little bit more all of the time like we probably don't need to do that a little bit more, but we do anyway. And that's why we're constantly getting ahead and it's compound interest over time. Whereas other people will probably just be spending it going out, getting pissed or watching like reality shows or whatever it is. Like it's the successful people are always doing that a little bit more and those little incremental things to try and learn and try and improve all of the time. You've got to be curious about knowledge and always wanting to learn. It's interesting, it just reminded me of something. A friend of mine came to stay with me a couple of weeks ago and he was on the sofa watching something on Netflix and I was sitting there like watching sales videos whilst eating my yeah. breakfast. And he's like, he looked over me and he's like, that's why you're successful I'm not I'm like mm -hmm. like, but that, it wasn't I wasn't doing it intentionally it was like unconsciously that's what I wanted to do yeah, because I'm passionate about the game of learning and like I'm a big believer in like life is a game of skill acquisition and the more mm -hmm. skills you have like the further you'll go with mm -hmm. even less effort you mentioned in terms of uh, mentors who's had the biggest impact on you originally and maybe recently the ones that stick in my head probably from my younger days were the likes of Grant Cardone Ty Lopez I still think he's killing the game I've got big know. into his YouTube like last week I don't know why I've never listened to any of it before but it's Ty yeah yeah, yeah. So, I bought that was probably one of the first programs I bought was 67 Steps back eight years ago when he was his Lamborghini in the garage with all the books in the background that went like viral back in the day and that got me into reading so I was reading a book a week consistently so I went through all of the books that Ty recommended and then Amazon on speed all, all the time Amazon Prime buying book after book. So I would say Ty Lopez, Grand Cardone, like which are more well-known probably brands that people could start with. Uh, Jim Rohn is a great mentor. He's not alive anymore, but he was Tony Robbins' mentor back in the day. So probably those three. Now I would say Alex Amorzi is great. I'm sure a lot of your audience uh, watch him. Some some great value in those. Uh, his book and obviously his YouTube. So I would say those, and then now it would just be for specific things. So whether it's sales, maybe someone like Cole Gordon, I've done his course recently on sales. A spirituality mindset, so spirituality and mindset would be Naval Ravikant. I mentioned his book, The Alchemy. I think it's called The Alchemy something. That's very good, simple. He's created multi-millions with his SaaS companies, but he always has the pillars of like happiness with health, wealth, love, happiness. So yeah, I like to vary it up. And then spirituality would be someone like um, Sadhguru or also those type of guys. And then finance, Ray Dalio's books are really cool and good. So yeah, there's, there's quite a few. I've probably missed quite a few off, but I mean, they're endless. But just learning from people at the top, are they where you want to be? Or have they been successful in their own right on whatever sector or avenue that you're looking at to get mentors? Because there's a lot of people that are given a lot of advice now, but it's like, what have they done to get to where they've got to? Yeah. I think there's a lot of people like 
fake gurus on the internet who their mm. business is giving advice rather than actually having a business in the first place, mm. which I think is very frustrating. Yeah, for sure. And let's get more and more because people want more reach and content. So everyone's creating reels, everyone's creating TikToks, etc. Whereas like some of the real business gurus, you can go on YouTube and watch and it's maybe only had a few thousand views, but this guy's probably like maybe created a billion dollar company and it's an interview. And those are the ones that I like to try and find as opposed to the ones that are just big title thumbnail clickbait clickbait well edited just more netflix like keeping you enthralled for the viewer I, i'd rather learn from someone that's like made multi millions or billions and sometimes those don't get the bigger clicks but it's you want to try and find through them